Welcome to Unconfuse Me. I'm Bill Gates. By 2009, uh, there was a couple of, almost 100,000 folks who were using it back then. That's when I took the plunge, set it up as a not-for-profit, a mission-free world-class education for anyone, anywhere. And then it spread. Oh, yeah. A lot of the vision of Khan Academy in the early days, yes, there was an accessibility piece of it. Yeah, we can make videos. We can share with everyone. But the pedagogical aspect wasn't just access. It was that people could finally leverage technology to learn at their own pace. If you only got a 70 or 80% on some concept, the class doesn't need to move on to the next one and build on that gap. The, the, the students should be allowed to work on that. If you just get, let people have a strong foundation, the, the next few layers in math come pretty easy. With a weak foundation, no matter how bright or hardworking you are, they're very, very difficult. So that was the thesis. I think over the last 10 years on this journey, we've, we've got a ton of efficacy studies in different contexts, different countries, and they all kind of say the same story, that if students engage, let's call it 30 to 60 minutes a week, even that, what I would call fairly le low level of engagement, they're growing pretty dramatically, 20, 30% more than expected, or, or in some cases more. And so I think the question over the next couple of years is how do we get more students to engage at that level? Yeah, I think that challenge, a lot of our conversations have been on that your tools are a miracle for the 10 to 15% most motivated, but then how do we draw in that other 85%? And I do think in the last year or two as you've engaged with teachers and districts, we're starting to see that it can be a tool basically for all students. That's the goal. <laughs> That's what I mean, yeah. But to your point, I actually think 80, 90% of hopefully 100% of students, if they're able to engage in the right way, especially if you catch them early, uh, they can have that foundation. I, I think the main issue is just a lot of kids, frankly, just check out by the time they're in middle school. So in learning, you've got the classroom environment can use that time in a certain way. And you've got whatever time you get with a student where they're kind of by themselves and assume they have a, a device. How do you see the time in the classroom? Is the availability of your tools shifting what people do in the classroom and do they use it real time in the classroom? We were all starting 10 years ago, 12 years ago. It was only more fluent school districts that would have one-to-one -one laptops. The rest of them had to share. The good thing is over the last 10 years because of E-rate, a lot of that's been addressed. It's unusual now to see a, a school where you don't have one-to-one -one laptops in, say, a math class. And so, yeah, the, all the students will take out their, their laptops and do 20 minutes while the teacher walks around. They'll take 10 kids aside, do a focus intervention with them, do a worked example with them. The other 20 keep working. Then they'll take another 10 aside. But when they do that consistently, it uh, makes a huge difference. And then for the students who either need gap filling or the students who are ready to race ahead, they can do so. That's, that's what they really like about Khan Academy. Not only do you get that practice and feedback in the moment, but the kids who want to race ahead can, and the kids who need to do some gap filling can too. And the dashboard that helps the teacher see the status of all the students, that's a Khan Academy thing that the teacher account gives them a really clear indication of what's going on. Yeah, I mean, we all remember growing up in a classroom that the only time of real measurement is at the end of the unit. And then you get the test, the test is graded, you get a 90%, I get an 80%. All right, let's move on. No one even attempts to improve that. And so what we realize is that now with tools like Khan Academy, you can give real-time information. Well, you can give real-time feedback to the student, but you can also give real-time information to the teacher so that they can intervene and they can do things. I, I hope in the future that that practice is the assessment, that you don't even have to take separate assessments. But yeah, the idea is let's give the teachers real-time information Let's not wait until it's too late. Subscribe to Unconfuse Me wherever you listen to podcasts.